Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to discuss how to play against the London system with the black pieces. The London system is considered one of the most solid opening in the game of chess. Today we are going to finally break through and going to see how to uh, get a better position against the London system with the black pieces and how to win against the London system. This video is going to be extremely critical for all those who are wanting to learn how to play against the London system. So without wasting any second of time, we are going to simply jump right into it. So first of all, there are two ways to play the London system. One is the normal way to play the London system and second is to play the Jobawa London. So first we are going to look at how to, how to play against the Jobawa London. White plays 1d4 or solid 1d4, knight of 6 and here on the second move, white plays the move knight to c3. And the, that's the main idea of playing the Jobawa London. Uh, we play the move d5, bishop to f4. Uh, the basic point of London system here is white plays bishop to f4, not committing the pawn to c4, uh, but white can commit the pawn to c3 or can keep the pawn to c2. So in the Jobawa London, uh, white puts the knight to c3 and develops the bishop to f4. We play the move c5 on the third move. This is a very critical move. And after c5, white plays the move e3. Uh, the basic point of Jobawa London here is to put some tiny traps like uh, you can't develop with knight to c6 because uh, after knight b5, you are having the threat of knight c7, which is considered to be unstoppable. So knight c6 is a bad move. So what we do after e3 here is we first catch the pawn on d4. And after e d4, you can see how the b5 square is extremely weak covered by the, the bishop can come to b5, the knight to b5 can come in, threats like knight c7 is coming on. So we play the move a6, first covering the b5 square. And once you cover it, why it is considered, like the knight on c3 is simply a bad knight. It's doing nothing on c3. So after knight f3, we can play the move knight c6, and after knight e5, the best try for white to continue the game, or else if white plays any other move like bishop to d3, for example, you can simply play bishop g4, Develop naturally with e6, bishop d6, and the knight is extremely bad piece, and you are already good for good to, uh, good to go here. And black is extremely comfortable in this position. So that is the reason the best reply for white is to play the move knight to e5. The idea here is uh, white wants to capture on c6 and try to damage black's pawn structure. So what we do here is we play the move bishop d7. In case if white captures the knight, we can capture the knight back with the bishop, not harming the pawn structure. So after bishop d7, white plays bishop e2, e6. Definitely the bishop on d7 looks bad, but nothing is happening. It's a, a very solid bishop. Short castle. We play the move queen b6. And now that's our idea. We want to play queen b6. We want to play on the queen side. As the knight c3 is extremely bad piece, so it's a good idea to play on the queen side. So after queen b6, we are putting pressure on the pawn on d4 because the knight is on c3. What can't defend the d4 pawn by playing the move c3? So after queen b6, white is kind of forced to capture the knight or else the d4 pawn is a gone, a gone pawn. So after knight c6, we have bishop into c6. Guys, remember capturing the pawn is a bad idea because after knight f4, there could be some issues, uh, there could be some issues with the dark squares and now c3 is also coming in. So capture with the bishop always. And after rook b1, trying to defend the pawn. You play bishop e7, bishop f3, short castle, knight e2, trying to put the pawn on c3. You can play rook c8, and now the basic idea of black is to play on the queen side. And now, how, like, there would be question how would black really continue the game? So, idea of black is to push the pawn to a5. There could be ideas of bishop b5, pinning up the rook and the knight. And um, black is very comfortable here. And there could be some plans in the future to put the knight to e4 all, also. So yeah, black is very comfortable in this position and I guess uh, you, you're not going to have any real problems after reaching this particular position. We are also going to discuss a game in um, both the variation in the normal uh, London system and also in the Jobawa London. So this was a Jobawa London. So now let's move on to discuss what how to play against the normal London system. So now coming on to how to play against the normal London system here. White continues with 1d4, we play the move knight of 6 and now on the second move, black uh, white plays the move knight uh, bishop to f4, committing the bishop, d5, e3, c5, c3 and now this is, this is considered as the normal London system opening, very standard, we play the move knight c6, on the, on the third move, I recommend the move c5, 
And after knight c6, we have the move knight to d2. Uh, and here there are games where knight f3 is also a very common move to play the uh, play the game. But after knight f3, we can continue with queen b6, and after queen b3, you can play the move c4. And after like if you try to trade off the queens, it's good for black. Uh, there is uh, I've already uploaded a video in this particular uh, line where idea of black is to simply push the b pawn. And uh, black is extremely comfortable in this position. It's a one-sided attack, and black is is going to win very easily. So after after c4, if white goes back with queen c2, you are having a very good move, which is bishop to f5. Yeah. And you must play queen to b6 only whenever you are having this bishop f5 tactics on the board. Like after bishop f5, the white cannot capture the bishop because after queen into b2, the rook is a gone piece, and now black is winning the game. So this is what happens if white tries to play knight f3. But after knight d2, you can't really play the move queen b6 because after queen b3, c4, queen c2, bishop f5 tactics is not working because after queen c2, queen into b2, black and white can simply go back with the queen to b1 or even rook b1 hitting the queen. So it's not a good idea. So uh, you can you must always play queen b6 whenever you are having this bishop f5 on the board ready. If you're if this bishop f5 tactic is not working, it's best to develop the bishop first. Uh, so after bishop f5, black plays white plays the move queen b3, attacking the d7 b7 pawn. Uh, you play the move queen d7 in order to defend the pawn. And now the idea is c4. White plays knight f3, and now you are going to play the move c4, hitting the queen. Queen goes back, you play e6. Bishop e2, and you play b5. And like that's the point. You the point of playing b5. You are having a you are having the majority. You are having the uh, more space on the queen side, so it's better to play on the queen side. You play the move b5, short castle, you play the move bishop d6. Uh, the idea of playing bishop d6 here is you want to, after castling, after castle, you want to put one rook to the b5. So basically, currently the bishop is covering the b8 square. So you first want to remove the bishop by playing bishop d6. And after the bishop trade, white plays knight h4. If white is a one move late, for example, if white continues with a3, you can happily play the move h6. And after knight h4, uh, black, white is not even getting the bishop, and white is ex black is extremely better in this position. It's a one-side attack. You can play short castle, a5 and b4, and it's it's a one-side attack. So white is uh, white's only chance is to play knight h4. We are simply going to short castle, allow allowing white to capture the bishop, and here after b3, you can play rook eight, simply developing the uh, rook, putting pressure on the e3 pawn, a4, and you can play a6. The position is a very uh, very equalish. It's a block position, but practically speaking, up black is uh, much more better because black is having more space on the queen side, and uh, the e4 square is the most ideal square for the knight to go on. So it's uh, it's a very equalish position. But practically, black is also having a very good chance to continue the game. So this is the way how how you can play a normal way to play the London against the London system. Now we have discussed how to play the Jubao against the Jubao London and how to play against the normal London uh, system setup. So now we are going to discuss uh, two games, uh, one in the Jobava London and one in the classical London system. First, we are going to look at how to play against the Jobava London by looking at a game. So now let's quickly check it out. So now coming on to the game, uh, it is a game between uh, Vlad, uh, Vladislav Artemiev, uh, a strong 2700 Russian player, versus one and only Magnus Carlsen, the former world chess champion. So Artemiev starts with 1d4, Bla Magnus plays move knight f6, we are knight to c3, the Jobava London. D5, bishop f4, we, uh, Magnus plays the move c5. E3, pawn takes, pawn takes, and playing the move a6, covering the b5 square as we analyzed. Knight f3, we have the move knight c6, and here we have the move knight to e5. In our, in our discussion, in our analysis, we discussed bishop d7, the best move. But uh, okay, Magnus went for the move e6, which is also not a bad move. We have a knight trade, and white is saying that you are having a bad pawn structure. Magnus happily agrees and White continues with playing by playing the move knight a4. And now somehow the knight looks makes sense on a4 because the dive squares are like a bit of a weakness. Magnus plays the move bishop d6, trying to trade off the bishop. Um, Artis, uh, Artemiev goes back with the bishop, short castle, bishop d3. Uh, the basic point here is uh, like for example, if you are having a bishop trade and you are wondering what what to do if White puts the knight to c5 here is. Uh, Magnus idea is to simply pull the knight back to this one. and this is uh, this is how you can simply trade off the knight and after uh, after trading off the knight like black is way better black can play the move rook b8 black can break with c5 and it's a very very comfortable position 
uh, for black uh, because uh, white king having castle yet and black king is extremely safe. So uh, you can break the position anything you want. Uh, so yeah, you have to move bishop d3. That's why a5 a very critical move by Magnus. The reason is very uh, very concrete. The bishop is a good piece here, and our bishop is a bad piece. It's better to trade off the bishop by playing the move a5. That is to play bishop a6. Short castle, bishop a6. We have a bishop raid. We need to hit in the rook. Rook goes back, c4. Trying to attack. Because if we sit around like by playing the move c3, it's not going to work. Uh, Magnus is going to generate his own pay by, by putting the knight to e4, bring, breaking through with c5. So it's a better, it's a good idea that you break through yourself by playing the move c3. You have a bishop raid, knight to e4 still. Rook c1, knight to d6, by maneuvering by Magnus Carlsen. Idea is to attack the pawn. Pawn takes, pawn takes. And here, g2. And here, a good thing and a bad thing also here is uh, the pawn on d4 is a weakness. It's a isolated pawn. Black is having two pawns. Who was the black's one pawn? See, if, if I just trade off one pawn, you would see how black is having, white is having two weakness. These are two isolated pawns which could be targeted in the long term. So it's a good position for black, practically speaking up. Uh, in general, it's, it's a equal position, but it's all about practical choice. Queen b8, putting pressure on the b2 pawn. Rook c6, h6. b3, rook c8. Trying to trade off the rooks. Rook c1, and here we have a rook prey. Rook c7, you cannot capture the knight because of rook check and you can lose the rook. So rook goes back. Uh, you can trade off the rooks, it's uh, still equal, equal position, but yeah. Uh, it's equal position after knight c5, but yeah, our team have didn't went for it and he went for the move rook c4. Knight e4 hitting, uh, putting pressure on the rook. If you try to capture the pawn, it's a mate, like check, uh, and you have to give up the queen. So yeah, uh, we have queen b5, and here we have rook to b7, hitting the queen. And after queen takes, pawn takes here, after giving an exchange sacrifice, our team have thought that his pawn is going to be a supreme pawn, connected pawns, and uh, maybe it, he's going to outplay Magnus Carlsen. But in the exchange, he didn't he knew that Magnus got his own pass pawn. So it looks like white is having enough compensation, but it's black who is better in the position. After d4, knight b3, rook a7, then the queen d2, queen here, pawn push takes, and here check, you're getting a pawn, and after queen d4, uh, Artemis pawns simply are gone pawns and uh, he's also going to lose the knight and it's going to be game over for uh, Artemis. So that is the reason after move number 34, 24, Artemis decides to resign the game and Magnus Carlsen wins the game. It is a very uh, nice played game by Magnus Carlsen but uh, uh, a good thing we came up with a better solution here is after the move um, knight e5, it's better to play the move bishop d7. So that at the after after for example after bishop e2 e6 short castle uh queen b6 knight takes bishop takes the knight remains a useless piece so it's even a much better structure which we discussed uh so yeah this was the way you can play against the jabawa london so now let's uh, discuss a game where like how to play against the classical london system okay so now we are going to discuss how to play against the classical london system it is a game played between a 2300 rated player versus a strong 2600 rated player. Both the players are extremely strong player. And uh, the game continued with 1d4, knight f6, knight f3, d5, bishop f4, c5, e3, knight c6, e3. So this is the most common way to continue the game of chess uh, in the London system. Queen b6, as I said that bishop, uh, like, you can play the move queen b6 if you are having this tactics on the board, which is happening in this current position. That is the reason black went for the move queen b6 first at the place of bishop f5. So after queen b6 we have queen b3 pushing up the pawn to c4 and here white decides to capture trade off the queens. Now here's the question how will he try to continue the game with the black pieces. So here white went for the for the best move which is knight a3 and that is to play, to, uh, play the move knight b5 and put some pressure on the dark groups. So black continues with bishop f5. White plays the move knight h4, trying to hit the bishop. Bishop goes back, and it looks like does black simply wasted a move by playing the move bishop f5 and now retreating the move. 
Guess it's a good move because now the knight on h4 is simply a bad piece. It has to go back in the upcoming future. Whereas the bishop on d7 is a good piece. We have simply developed it. So after bishop d7, we have bishop c7 putting the putting pressure on the pawn on b6 and uh, saying black to the and saying black that you cannot push the pawn because even the pawn is hanging. So now this pawn is a gone gone. So here black plays the move, very strong move, e5. And here e5 is a very strong move because uh, now black hits the knight. And if you try to capture the pawn here, after bishop into a3, pawn into a3, knight e4, you can see there are so many weakness on the board that like white can even resign in the position. Okay, it's, it's, it's a completely bad position for white. So after e5 black, white is forced to move the knight, knight c2, and now comes the move e4, e4, a very strong move again. You cannot capture the pawn because of g5 and the knight is struck. So you can see how this knight is extremely bad piece. After e4, white was forced to play f4 in order to stop the move g5. And here finally we play the move b5. Bishop e2, bishop e7, b, uh, g3, short castle. Short castle, rook c8, bishop here, knight g4, bishop takes. Because after knight g4, white's uh, black's idea is not to capture the bishop, but to play the move f6 and the bishop is trapped. So white was forced to capture the bishop uh, knight and after f5 trying to make the square for the bishop. You won't believe, but the position is already winning for black. Black is extremely better in this position. It looks like a very, um, like a, a very, uh, block structure and should be equal, but black is extreme. It's a one side game. Black is extremely winning because black is the one, um, getting, uh, like, uh, in the play, in the driver's seat because black is the one having the attack by playing the move b4 and black is extremely better. f5, f6 hitting the bishop, but bishop goes back b4 finally attack king g2 if try to trade off the pawn black would be very happy to trade off everything and now c3 break is coming in and black is going to win the game so white plays king g2 and now b3 again a strong move pawn takes pawn takes rook takes rook takes rook a1 and now pawn takes nine. white captures the uh, rook and but okay black given exchange sacrifice but after rook a1 knight a5, very strong move. You cannot capture the knight because the queen is hanging. Because the uh, black can make a queen. So rook c1 and now comes the move bishop to d1. A very strong move. Now not knight b3 is coming in and uh, black and white is going to lose the rook. And again black is going to make a queen. So it's uh, so that's the reason after 26 move. Only 26 move black. Uh, white decides to resign the game. A very uh, genius game played by black in this particular position. Uh, in, in this game. Uh, like, uh, not, what we discuss here is after knight h3, this is the best way that, uh, white can continue the game after knight to a3. Just let me take you to the game. Uh, after knight h3, this is the best way white should continue. And we have already discussed how to play against this best variation. You can play e5, kick the knight, b5, and slowly and steadily you can build the attack on the queen side. You must remember that you must play on the queen side by pushing up the pawn and it's a very healthy way to continue the game. So, so today we have discussed how to play against the Jobava London and how to play against the classical London. We have discussed the theory and we've also discussed two games in the classical system and also in the Jobava London. So I hope that this video might have definitely help, helped you to improve your chess level skill. And finally, what you are waiting for how to play against the London system, you have finally got it. So you can, if you like the video, then make sure to like the video. If you're new to our channel, then make sure to subscribe to our channel because we always come up with these interesting ideas, how to play against these uh, different openings where many players uh, uh, feels uh, how to play against this particular opening. And if you want uh, like to, if you are facing any difficulty in any particular opening, you can just tell me in the comment below and I'm going to come up with that particular opening. So I'm going to see you soon, soon guys. So chill then, stay tuned and keep watching One Shot Chess.